Hello and welcome Sandats. I'm Snail Gaming and this is one of three class guide videos done in collaboration with Time Dive Tournaments. We'll be going over the agent today, but if you want to check out the Juggernaut or Marksman, those videos will be up on the Time Dive YouTube channel soon. The agent is a master of deceit, relying on quick movements and tactical positioning to strike down your enemies with a fatal blow. Now, if you hear anyone talking about how good Juggernaut or even Marksman is, I'm gonna need you to stab a damn knife down their throat, because around here we're agent and agent only. So, I've had a lot of experience with the dominating species, the agent, since the recent launch of the game, so I'm gonna share my tips, tricks, and recommendations with all of you guys. We'll be talking about the ice agent first, and then the shadow agent. But before we get into the specific agent subclasses, there's a few things you should know about playing agent. The first is that, unfortunately, you will be the squishiest class out there. The agent has relatively little armor at a value of 125, whereas marksmen have 150 and juggernauts have a astounding 200. The second one, and I want you to listen up here, is that you can instantly kill anyone by stabbing them from behind with your standard melee. A backstab does 1000 damage, which is enough to even kill a fully armored juggernaut who's covered in an overshield. Thirdly, I just want to touch on the agent's neutral abilities. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of them. The smoke bomb obscures your own vision along with the opponent's. The invisibility, although nice, has better alternatives in both classes, and the melee well, the melee is actually pretty good, because it gives you quite some range on your standard melee attack, and even makes it an AoE. But even so, I do feel like it's still a long cooldown for just some extra range and positioning, so I often opt out of using it. The ultimate is actually pretty good. It's a big AoE attack that I often use to get a double kill, or even shut down other people's ultimates. It does take a few seconds to activate though, which you should be aware of. But let's move on to the agent subclasses. The Sumeron Ice Agent has some of the most powerful abilities in the game, but they require that you have pretty good aim to land them on opponents. When I play the Ice Agent, I rarely opt for any of the neutral skills, simply because the ice skills are so powerful. Since his ultimate ability is a roaming ultimate, it is by default one of the most powerful ultimates in the game, allowing you to run around the map with increased speed and overshield, killing anyone with a single swing of your sword, and you barely even have to look at people for the slash to hone in on them. His melee ability is a throwable ice kunai. On a body hit, this kunai does 300 damage and briefly slows the enemy, while on a headshot it does 600 damage, which will take out anyone not wearing an overshield. This is extremely powerful, but can be quite difficult to land. His power skill is a frozen shuriken, which is insanely powerful. You throw the shuriken, and when impacting an enemy or surface, it explodes into fragments that continue forward and bounce off walls. These fragments do incredible damage, and significantly slow the enemy. If you hit this ability on an enemy, they will be at very low health, if not that already. And when I say it slows them, I mean it really slows them. I mean, I'm not in the business of shaming snails, but if just a single shot from the shuriken hits an enemy, they will be moving at the pace of a literal snail, giving you an easy target to finish off. The utility skill of the agent is an ice clone, which I have mixed feelings about, but it's good to get out of a jam. The ability has two charges, and when used it spawns a decoy frozen version of you, while allowing you to go partially invisible. This won't catch any experienced players off guard, but the invisibility and short confusion is nice to make an escape, or to sneak up on them. It should also be noted that this clone can be used to block a path, as you can't just walk right through it, and it will damage enemies that touch it, and after a fairly long delay, the clone will explode, dealing damage. Now moving on to the movement skill, the Ice Agent is able to control the direction of the slide, and extends the slide's distance while doing so. 
This seemed a little underwhelming to me at first, but once you learn how to use this effectively, it's a godly skill. Whenever you're sliding, you can wiggle back and forth a little or slide around corners to go pretty fast, which you can top off with a double jump at the end. The one drawback is that the ice slide is really loud, so don't expect to sneak up on people while sliding around. The elemental passive is quite good too. Whenever the ice agent uses ice skills, he gets a bit of armor back. This is really useful in combat and pairs super well with the ice clone ability, allowing you to throw a decoy of yourself, go invisible, and get armor. That's a pretty nice utility. For weapons, Honestly, any weapon combo will work well with the Ice Agent, so go ham. Now let's move on to the Bakunawa Shadow Agent, my personal favorite. Starting off though, we'll have to talk about my least favorite Agent Ultimate, Darkfall. This roaming ultimate gives you wall hacks to see all opponents on the map, makes your movement a little faster, and partially blinds the opponent's screens when you're close to them. This isn't a bad ultimate, as it really allows you to get the drop on your opponent, but it does still heavily rely on your gun skill, as it has no damage of its own, and honestly, sometimes it works against you as opponents know when you're approaching them by the degree of blindness on their screen. I usually opt for the big freaking kunai when playing Shadow Agent, but either is viable. His melee ability is my favorite thing in the whole freaking game. It's a kunai that, in addition to some nice benefits of doing 150 damage and giving temporary blindness when hit on an enemy, will allow you to teleport to it after throwing it. Now let me tell you, this is huge. I cannot tell you guys how many times me or my teammates have been in a gunfight and have been able to teleport behind enemy lines and kill 2-3 to three people with very little effort because they weren't expecting an attack from behind or were distracted by the gunfight. Paired with a backstab, this only makes things easier as a quick melee to the back finishes off any sand that. But if you want to use this ability to the fullest, you'll also equip a shotgun so you can take down people even faster after closing the gap on them. An important point with this skill is that you choose when to teleport. You could throw the kunai and teleport to it while it's still traveling through the air. Or you could throw it on a wall to teleport to a few seconds later. You actually have 8 seconds to teleport to the kunai before it despawns. Sometimes I'll throw my kunai, wait for an enemy to see me and engage me, then teleport to the kunai and backstab them. A little issue I found though, which is prevalent in basically all melee skills in the game, but which is very prevalent in the TP kunai, is that your melee and melee ability is bound to the same key. I'll often be trying to melee an enemy and end up throwing my kunai instead. Then I try and melee again and end up teleporting to the kunai. <laughs> Me and others have brought this issue up to the developers though, and hopefully they will implement separate keybinds for the melee and melee ability in the future. Moving on, the power skill is a shuriken that sends little spectral crows to chase after your enemies. These crows can be pretty good at doing 290 damage, and I highly prefer them over the smoke bomb, but they can be a little underwhelming too. The crows only spawn if you throw the shuriken close enough to an enemy, and the enemy can potentially avoid the crows by dodging behind a wall or nearby cover. It does spawn one crow for each enemy in the radius of the shuriken though, so there is a lot of potential. Just try not to use them in rooms with obstacles everywhere. Moving on to the utility skill, this is another big one. You place down an area of darkness when you will be completely invisible as long as you're not shooting. Unlike the neutral and ice agent utility skills, this ability will make you completely invisible as long as you're in the zone and not shooting, and then will even give you partial invisibility for a few seconds after leaving the zone. This is great for honestly any situation. You can use it to hide and recover if you're getting shot at, use it to gain an advantage in a gunfight, and my personal favorite is just using it to confuse your enemy and then run up to them with a shotgun or a backstab to finish them off. You can do some pretty nice combos with some of these abilities too. 
Putting down a shadow field to go invisible and then throwing a teleport kunai behind your opponents will often allow you to easily take him up from the back while they're still distracted by the invisible agent that they believe to still be in the shadow territory. Now, for the mobility skill, the agent also gets a short range teleport along the lines of a Warlock's Blink from Destiny. Now, it doesn't take you too far, it relies on your current momentum, and it can't be activated after a double jump. But, it is still a great way of moving across the map more quickly, closing distances, or evading your opponent. The elemental passive simply makes you stay invisible longer whenever you go invisible. So, some final tips. I recommend running a shotgun for close range ambushes, preferably with the perk Vendetta as you can hide behind a corner after getting shot, and then you'll know exactly when to ambush your pursuer due to the wall hacks of the Vendetta perk. Another nice option is Choke Us, which pairs great when you're in the relative safety of your shadow territory and have time to charge up your shotgun shot before pulling the trigger. When playing a 3v3, try to exploit situations where the enemy is preoccupied with your teammates to slip behind enemy lines either with a teleport or an alternate route to break them down from within. Shadow Agent is also amazing at the overcharge game mode because you can use your shadow territory to relatively safely pick up the battery and then you can throw your kunai to teleport all the way back to your base. I love sneaking in and stealing the battery at 90% and then teleporting back to my base and letting it charge to 100 before the enemy can even cross the map to prevent it. I do have one final tip, which describes the majority of my encounters in this game, and although simple, it's very powerful, especially in Shadow Agent. Of course, it's the shotgun melee. Anytime you're in close quarters with someone or hear them around the corner, all you gotta do is run, or preferably slide, right into their face, fire your shotgun, which will either one-shot them, or it will leave them at super low health, allowing you to kill them with a single melee. Of course, if you miss the shotgun, the melee will also be helpful, because you just gotta hit two melees to kill an enemy Sandat, no matter their current armor. So that's slide, shotgun, melee, all in one quick swift move. Do note that sometimes melees in this game can be a little uh, wonky, but hopefully they will refine that soon. So to end this off, if you like utility focused skills, outsmarting your opponent to strike from behind, or you just like getting up in their face with a shotgun, I'd highly recommend the Shadow Agent. If you like engaging at any range and enjoy powerful damaging skills, I'd recommend the Ice Agent. But no matter what you choose, you'll be one of the most mobile sand dads out there with the Agent's Kit. If you have any other tips, playstyles, or comments that you'd like to share, be sure to do so below. This video took a lot of effort to make, so I'd appreciate it if you'd backstab that like button and shotgun blast the subscribe. I've been Snail Gaming, and I'll catch you in the next one.